Good morning. This is the video about quotes. Okay, I'm gonna take my mask off for the video so you can hear me well in the microphone. This is the video about how to do quotes. Okay, what we're gonna do to find quotes in context is we're gonna use Google as a starting point here. And then you're, we're gonna type in here, uh, let's say we're doing a research project on Akbar the Great. We'll type him na his name in here and we'll go to look for a source, a website as a source about Akbar the Great. Now, we're going to try to avoid using Wikipedia generally as our main source. However, one uh, thing you can use Wik Wikipedia for is to consider looking at uh, the references at the bottom of Wikipedia. So we're gonna scroll down here as an option and you can look here to get some background knowledge and we get to the very bottom and you can see there's all these sources at the very bottom of Wikipedia. Now, source number two happens to be Encyclopedia Britannica Online. All right, so we could take a look at that. Now, notice it was retrieved 2013, but we're gonna go take a look at that right now today. Now, I'm gonna bring this uh, screen up to larger or full screen so we can see the title of this article is Akbar Mughal Emperor. The title of the uh, website is Britannica. The publisher happens to be Encyclopedia Britannica, comma, Inc. or Incorporated. And then you can find that at the very bottom of this website. And the URL is up here at the top. Britannica.com for short, but also slash biography slash Akbar for the longer version. All right, so how to find a quote in context? The common mistake that people will do at a grade eight level is they'll put in Akbar the Great, and then they will put in the word quotes. This is not the way we wanna search for quotes. We wanna find it in context. So just put in Akbar the Great, find a source, and after you find your source, do some reading in your source. After you've done some reading, find a sentence that seems to fit with what you are interested in writing about in your research project. Say, for example, you decided already after reading a few sources that you are interested in writing a paragraph or more about how Akbar the Great is open-minded. A little note for IBMYP students, open-minded is a learning profile in IBMYP. Now, say if that's part of your paragraph topic that you wanna make an argument that, in my opinion, Akbar the Great was open-minded, we might find a sentence that fits with that argument. Here, it says, although he never renounced Islam, he took an active interest in other religions, persuading To, uh, other religions to have a discussion before him or with him. Now you could do a paraphrase of that or you could copy it word for word. Now I'm gonna show you copying it word for word. So I'm gonna select it from the beginning to the end. I'm gonna go control C to copy it. I'm gonna hit minus and I'm going to have it, well, you could paste it into Word. I happen to have gone ahead and pasted it into Word already. So here it is in Word. Now notice here I've got in my notes, re research notes, finding quotes on my research of Akbar the Great. Quote number one, little brackets here. I chose this quote to show evidence of Akbar being open-minded. You wanna think about why you're choosing your quotes, especially for higher level students. Now, although he never renounced Islam, okay, we see that that's where it starts. What do we need to put at the very beginning? What we need to put at the very beginning is quotation marks and at the end quotation marks. Now, we need some more punctuation. Do you know what punctuation is about to come? Here it comes. We are going to add brackets. Then what? What comes next? Well, we need to put the author's name. 
Now, if you haven't memorized the author's name, we'll need to toggle back to go up here and note that the author's name is Kenneth Valhatchet. Now, if that looks like a harder name to spell, we'll probably need to organize our windows in a way where we can see the author's name at the same time as we can see our Word document so we can type it in while seeing the name over there to get the spelling correct. We'll put in the last name first, Val Hatchet, comma, Kenneth. Bracket. Now, depending on which style, whether you're doing MLA 8 or APA, or your teacher's requirements, your teacher may ask you to put additional information in here at the brackets. But the key thing that most styles want you to have is the last name, comma, first name. Now there is some variation where for some styles, the the initial, the first initial, or the all the initials. So you would need maybe the middle initial. But at any rate, when, depending on what style, you can always go back and delete um, his first name and put in just the initial if you're changing to one style or another. This is the key information that you want to have. All right, let's go on uh, to see what other information. Let's say your teacher wants you to do a variation of MLA 8 with maybe a few flavors of their own specific instructions thrown in. Well, the key thing is we're going to need to record for our uh, MLA 8 is the name of the author for the first thing in the works cited entry. We'll put that down here to keep track of that. <coughs> now, we're also going to need the name of the article. And the name of the article we can see is Akbar Mughal Emperor. So we're going to keep track of that. Akbar. Now, here where there's two parts of the title, we might put in colons. Here, it's implied with the uh, separate line that there's two parts to this title, but the subpart of the title is not necessarily um, as important as the first part. Why? Because we can see in the URL, the second part isn't included in the, U in the um, URL. So, depending on what your teacher's instructions would be, whether you need this colon here or not. Also, <coughs> we will need to put quotations around the article. Okay, what do we need next? What do we need next? We need to go back to the top and look at getting the name of the website. Britannica. Then we're going to go with the name of the publisher next, which is Encyclopedia Britannica, comma, Inc. All right, so let's go back and format what we've typed in here and check our spelling. Check our spelling on Britannica and check our spelling to see if we've misspelled anything else. Yes, we've misspelled this word. So it's also good to go and edit and double check to make sure that you don't have any spelling check. Um, now the, the, the last name is coming out with a red line. I should double check the spelling of the last name and just make sure that it's spelled correctly. Now here the key thing is the name of the website should be in italics here. The publisher should not be in italics. And now I still need the date of publish. Now this may be hard to find on some websites. Let's open it up. This one is definitely hard to find because as we scroll down, uh, it's just not popping up at, at the top. So is there anywhere else it could hide the date of publish for us on this particular website? Sometimes it's hidden at the bottom. With this particular website, it's very hard to see the bottom. We're going to go really fast at the bottom, and it does that to us. Really fast at the bottom in 2000 and 
21 is the date that we found at the bottom. All right, so we were able to find the date on this one. The date is 2021. Now, the next thing we need, and the last thing, is the URL. So I'm going to come back here, move this over, and notice something's happened because I scrolled down. I went down to a subsection of this. So I'm going to hit back and back and get back to just the main URL. Make sure I'm on the right URL I want. And then I'm going to put the URL in to go with that. Now I've got that there. Now I could format that later when I am putting that into my page about my work cited. But for now, what I'm going to do is I am going to format it right now for the purpose of showing you how you will format it into your work cited. Now you're going to want everything to be 12 point font. Now ironically, I'm going to want all of this to be 12 point font. And I'm going to pick Times New Roman, which we'll find under the letter T down here. I sure hope we find it. There we are, Times New Roman. Now here, I'm going to want eventually all this to be double spaced exactly. So I'm going to go to Home, Paragraph, Arrow. And I'm going to put this at exactly double spaced. And then I'm going to get rid of these spaces over here for now. And I'll leave the rest of this alone. And now I've got it double spaced. Next, I'm going to add a hanging indent to just this part under Paragraph, Down Arrow, special. I'm going to go down here and put hanging and I'm, uh, I like 1.5 centimeters. Now you could get very precise. It could be less, but at any rate, this is good for now. You've got a hanging indent. It can be seen. You've got the last name here and it stands out because of the hanging indent. Those are the parts you need for your we're excited. Let's review that quickly. Author, title of the article, title of the website, publisher, date, and URL. That's what you need for a good work cited. And the double spaced and hanging indent are key. All right, back to our quote. We've got our quote, we've got quotation marks on each side, we've got brackets with the author's name in it, and we have made a note in our notes about why we're choosing this quote. This is very important for higher level students to be thinking very carefully about why are you choosing your quote. Thank you for your attention. We're gonna keep this video short. If you have any questions, send me an email or chat on MS Teams. Don't forget, I have other videos that you can take a look at on other topics.